everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm Christine and today we're going to make a crochet cat hat beanie. The version that we're going to be doing together today is the rainbow stripes. I'm actually going to have several versions of this hat with different variations of the striping. So make sure that you follow along for that. Uh, the construction of the hat, the way that it's worked up, is we have a two inch brim at the bottom that is made with a double crochet uh, ribbing. Then we have single crochet followed by double crochet stripes. It's worked in rounds, okay, uh, but we never cut the yarn. So I'll show you how to carry the yarn up on the inside. Actually, it's over here to carry. So you can see, we just carry along our yarn all the way up the inside. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so the sizing of the project is 10 and a half inches wide. Uh, down here at the ribbing part, it's actually about 10 uh, because it cinches in just a little bit for that ribbing. But when you get up here, it's about 10 and a half uh, inches wide um, up here. And for the height, we have a two inch ribbing and about a five and a half inch top. Uh, this fits my daughter and I'll put the measurements of her head in the description box below and on my blog, I'll have that uh, all written out. So if you want it to be a little bit taller cause your head is, you know, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, you just need to add maybe one stripe or if you're making it for a smaller child or a baby, you may just want to, um, do one less stripe and on your starting chain, uh, you're going to want to just chain the amount of stitches you need to get around that person's head. Uh, so here we have a chain of 60 to start for this particular uh, version. That's what I'm going to show you, but you can uh, change the amount of starting chains to make a smaller hat. Okay, so for the materials for this pattern, you're just going to need two colors. Uh, you're going to need a color for the small stripes and the, the ribbing, and you're going to need a color for your big stripes. I've used a self-striping yarn from uh, Red Heart, so this kind of makes like a rainbow, which is really nice. And then I have used white for the brim and for the small stripes. You're going to need a hook. A darning needle and scissors. I've used a five millimeter aluminum hook, even though this yarn calls for five and a half. I like doing it with five. You can use pretty much any yarn and any hook. Uh, just make sure that your starting chain uh, fits around your head. Okay, so we're going to get started with the brim. Uh, so like I said, I did 60 chains for my brim uh, to start out. You want to have a multiple of two in your starting chain because we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be doing a double crochet around the front post, a double crochet around the back post. So you need two, a multiple of two. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do my slip knot and I'm going to chain 60 stitches. Uh, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I've made my chain of 60 stitches for the um, to wrap around the head. So what you're going to want to do is connect the two ends. So just make sure that your chain is not twisted. And then find your last stitch, or well, your first stitch that you made. Stick your hoop, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> stick your hook into that first chain. and then pull through your working yarn through the first chain and then through the loop that you have already on your hook. So now you've connected this into a loop, like a, a big circle. <clears throat> All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to chain two. I mean, you can chain three. It, it's supposed to count as a, a stitch, a double crochet stitch, but I only like to chain two. So I'm going to do a chain of two. Okay. Now this chain two is going to count as a back post double crochet. So when we're going around, uh, when we're going around and doing that, this one is always going to automatically kind of 
become a, a back post, which I'll show you that when we go through. Um, but what we need to do first is we need to do a double crochet in every one of these chain stitches around. And what I do is I just take the top two or like the the top loop and the middle back bar. Some people go into the back and they always take this back bar, but I just to be quicker, I like to just go right into the middle and do my stitch. And it leaves like this one little loop on the bottom, which I don't mind how that looks. So that's how I do my double crochets across my chain. But however you want to do it, you can go into, you can twist it and you can use the back bump if you want and then you'll have like the two bars at the bottom I just have the one bar at the bottom with the way I do it so just uh, make all your double crochets around and then we'll make me back okay so um I've done my 60 double crochets all the way around so I have my my band started. Uh, when you get to the last one, just give a count to make sure you have the even number of stitches that you were trying to have when you chained up. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to go into the top of that chain, <clears throat> not the first stitch. So I have uh, two chains and then this V here, this is the top of this first bar. So I won't go in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the top of my, my chain here that I have. And I'm going to connect, so I'm going to um, pull through and join. And then that chain two uh, becomes my first uh, double crochet for the brim. That's how it works for the brim. So I'm going to chain two, and then this is going to be uh, in the back because we're going to start our ribbing with a front post double crochet. Okay. So the front post double crochet, you just do uh, wrap the yarn, yarn over and then you're going to go behind the, the bar. Okay, you're going to put the, um, you're going to insert your hook behind the stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. So I've done, this will be a front post double crochet. Now for the next stitch, I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go to the back of my work and I'm going to go around that bar from the back side. Okay, so this is going to be a back post double crochet. And those will be on the back, these will be in the front. Um, and because we started with a front post, our last stitch when we come back around will be a front post and it's just going to automatically push back that chain two as a back post um, double crochet. So we'll just do that one more time. Yarn over, the next one is front, so we go in from the front and we do a double crochet. The one after that is the back, so we yarn over, we go to the back and we pull, do a double crochet. So we're going to do that all the way around and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I finished that first round, well the second round, but the first round with the front post and the back post ribbing. And I'm at the last two stitches. So when you get back to the end, what you're going to see is you have your last, um, your last stitch of the, the round and then you have your um, chains from the beginning. So this should fall where you have a front post double crochet so you do that front post and it just naturally pushes in the chains by having a front post at the end and a front post at the beginning so my chains will always be a back post <clears throat> all right so I'm just going to find my second chain and I'm going to slip stitch to join the round and round two is done Okay, so we're going to do two more rounds of ribbing. So that first round was just double crochet. And then when we do this round two, we start to create our ribbing. And we're going to do two more and that will make our two inch brim. So I'm going to work up my ribbing and I will meet you back. Okay, so I'm back. I've just, I'm just finishing up my um, last row of ribbing. So I'll just do 
those last few stitches of front post, back post, double crochets, front post, that's the last one, ending with front post, and then that brings us to our chain two, slip stitch into the chain two and join. Okay. So there's one special stitch that I want to teach you guys for this pattern. Um, and it's the stitch that's creating these little ridges, this texture that you see. This is the front loop of the stitch that you're looking at. So this double crochet, this is the front loop or the front bar. Um, and what we're doing when we make our special stitch uh, is we're doing the single crochets into the back loop only, but we're also getting the third bar on the back of the stitch. So it's a, it's a um, back bar or back loop only single crochet with the third bar as well. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we don't change colors yet. Um, move my example out of the way. Um, so I'm going to chain one, and from here on, we don't count that chain um, after this first stitch. Uh, and then this first stitch here is we're going into the previous round's chains, so I don't have a stitch to do the back loop only. So I'm just going to go in and do a regular single crochet to count as that stitch. Um, that chain one won't count, but this stitch will count from now forward. And then this bar here, um, this front bar, double crochet, on the top of the stitch we have a V, like our typical V, with the two bars there. But I only want to work into the back loop or the back bar. So I'm going to go into the back bar and then I'm also going to take, if you look at the back of the stitch, there's this third bar here, this little extra bar. So I'm going to take both of those bars when I do this. I'm going to go down into the back loop and I'm going to continue and take the third bar. And you might have to wiggle a little. So you get the two loops there, but your front loop is still going to show up down here like a stripe. So again, I'm going to go in the middle of the V, take the back loop, and you can tilt it to see. I'm going to take that third bar in the back. All right, again, and you can see the back of the stitch, back loop, third bar. And those are the, the two things I'm taking. And it's really going to be a lot easier to see on the colored rows what you're doing. Right here, it's hard to see because I'm doing white on white. <clears throat> because I'm doing those small stripes in white. So I'm going to go in the middle of the stitch, grab the back loop, continue grab the third bar. And I'm going to do that all the way around and then I'll show you how to change colors for, um, for the stripes. Okay, so we're back. I am back around to the beginning of my round. Uh, so here I've done my last um, back uh, back bar, back loop, single crochet with the third bar. I've done the last one. And then uh, what I see up here that I have to work with, I have that chain and then I have the top of the first stitch. So uh, what you want to do is ignore the chain whenever you're joining on all the next rounds. Uh, we just use that too to go up, but we don't need it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go into the top of the first stitch and slip stitch to join like that and then this is where we're going to connect our yarn I'm gonna get this is the the ball that I was using on my last hat and where it left off was I had a little bit of the last um, the purple so I just kind of removed that because I want to start with a color and I kind of want to make sure I can get all the way around at least one side with the same color. So I'm going to use this now. I'm not going to disconnect or cut that yarn. I'm going to leave it connected. And I'm going to take my next color. Um, and I'm just going to pull this color through. I don't have a chain or anything. I just joined. And then I'm just going to 
pull this yarn through that loop there to add the next color. And the way to make it more clean that I found is I'm going to pull this uh, previous color tight so that it's almost like flat now after I add my new color. It's like flat. And I'm going to bring my um, first color to the right of me, always on the right. And then now I, I'm going to pinch the tail because I didn't like lock it in yet. I'll sew it in later. Just leave yourself enough to, to sew it in. Um, <clears throat> so pull my white tight, pinch my tail, and then now I'm going to do a chain. And I just do one chain. Even though I'm going to be doing double crochets now, uh, I feel like with all this going on, I just need one chain. And then I'm going to do a double crochet into that same stitch. So we'll always ignore the chain we do. We do one chain on the single crochet rows and we do one chain on the double crochet rows as well. But we just always ignore it when we join. Uh, there is a possibility that you might not ignore it and accidentally add a stitch. So just maybe count your stitches every couple rows to make sure you keep, I have 60, so, you know, I make sure I keep with 60 stitches. So now I'm going to do my double crochet. Um, sorry, I'm just going to get a little bit of yarn. And uh, I'm just going to go into the same stitch that I joined in because I need to have the same amount of stitches, right? So I'm going to, and this chain doesn't count, so I need to go into that same stitch. So I'm going to just double crochet in that stitch. You could go over the top of your tail if you want to right here to hide it a little bit, pulling that white to get it down. And see, it's kind of flat. I mean, it looks pretty, pretty straight, the um, stripes you're doing this way. And then just go all the way around the whole um, hat and do uh, a round of... Um, just regular double crochet. So this round is easy. You don't have to do the special stitch on this round, not with this version of the uh, of the pattern. We don't. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go all the way around with my first color, and then I'll meet you back here, and we will change back to the white. Okay, so we're back, uh, and when I went around. And I got back to the beginning, um, I guess because of how tight I pull that slip stitch, it was hard to see my very first, um, I'm sorry, my very last stitch to do. But I just counted my double crochet bars and I needed one more, so I put it in. So I made sure to stay at 60. Um, but when you get back and it's time to join, you're going to go in, you're going to skip the slip stitch. You're going to go right into the top of the previous, uh, you're going to go right into that real first stitch. And slip stitch okay and then again we're not cutting uh, we're carrying so I'm gonna drop this colored yarn and oh, it's a little bit hold on it's a little bit twist it up and so I'm gonna put everything that way and usually what I do is I move my um, I've gotten twisted up <laughs> let's get untwisted. I'll uh, bring my, um, that's maybe not the only one that gets all twisted up when ch color changes. I, what I want to do is bring this to my right side, like get it out the way. So I'll bring the yarn that I'm using now to the right. And so then my, my um, next color is right there. I'm just going to bring it up. And I'm going to yarn under, put the yarn under, and just bring it through the loop like that. And then again, I'm going to pull this down so that it's hidden and do my chain one. Okay, uh, so like I was saying, we're just going to pull that up and then pull the previous yarn down a little so it's flat. Uh, we've got our chain one there. And now you're going to be able to see better the, the back loop only single crochet with the third bar so this first one is kind of it's kind of tricky because it's so tight with the join um, but you're just going to go in the middle of the stitch and wiggle in there and take both the back loop and the third bar 
and then do your single crochet. Uh, and we're going to do that all the way around. So back loop only with the third bar on the back. Those two there. Single crochet. Back loop only plus third bar. Single crochet. Back loop only plus third bar. Single crochet. And you see how it's leaving this little ridge? But it's not just leaving a ridge. It's also filling in the gap behind because you are grabbing the third bar. So you know sometimes when you do back loop only, there's this big hole, right? And you know, it's okay for certain projects, but I find like it, it can leave gaps. So that's why I like uh, for these stripes to do the back loop only plus the third bar. Uh, and the best way, <coughs> excuse me, the best way to do it um, and for it to be easy to do is to make sure that you're not stitching too tight. If you stitch tight, it's going to be hard for you to see the back loop only. I'm sorry, for you to see the third bar when you need to, to pull on it um, to get into it. So I'll go just in the middle of the stitch and then you can turn your work to see and grab that back loop with it. Uh, and it looks really, it makes a really nice stripe. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep doing this for, let's see how many we have. So in here we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six stripes. So once you've done your six stripes, um, at the end of this last stripe, we'll meet back and then I'll show you how to do the last row and I'll show you how to do the join that I do at the top. Okay, so I'm back now and I've finished all my stripes. Uh, this is kind of what my seam is looking like on the, what you would typically have as the back of the hat. Um, <clears throat> but actually, to, for me, that seam is going to be on the side. That's how I've done it. And so that way, um, like if you prefer the stripes on one side, you can wear it that way. If you prefer the stripes on the other side, you can wear the hat that way. Um, so the very last row around that we have um, is going to be half doubles. So I'm going to do one more round all the way around in half doubles um, with the same technique. Oh, lost my hook. Okay. So we're here at the last color change. So I'm going to move this yarn over there. <clears throat> Take the white yarn, put the yarn under the hook and pull it straight up through like that. Pull your old yarn tight, make it flat. Chain one. Now um, all the way across we're going to do a half double instead of a single I just finished by a half double on top um, and we're still going to do the half double into the back loop only the back of a bar only and we're still going to pick up the third bar so you're keeping with that same special stitch the only difference now this time is that instead of a single crochet you're doing a half double crochet so do a half double um, back loop only, back bar only, plus the third bar, um, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so we're back. I have done my half double, back loop only, plus the uh, third bar all the way around. So we have that last ridge there. Um, and the way that I seam this up, sometimes I see people doing these types of things. Uh, hold on, I'm going to cut my tail sew that in after tuck that inside of my my other color uh, and then to sew up the top um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a flat surface single um, I'm sorry a like a surface slip stitch that I use on uh, granny squares it's a flat surface type of, of stitching um, and then the way the way that works is that you're your working yarn needs to be in the middle 
like as if you had two granny squares that you were going to attach here. Um, and so to do that, I just don't join. So now my yarn is in the middle. And then I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take a loop from the top and a loop from the bottom. Okay. And I keep my working yarn in the middle and I'm going to take this loop on the top, the, just the inside loops. So it's, it's the back loop, I guess. Yeah. Back loop, back loop. So back loop here, keep this working yarn down out of the way and go over to the other side and take the back loop on that side. And then you can pull your uh, working yarn through all three of those loops that you have all the way across. And I just do it on the outside of the work because I think it's so pretty that I don't think you need to do the seaming on the inside and then flip it. Oh, shook my camera all around. Um, like you don't need to seam on the inside and then flip it inside out because this seam is so neat uh, that I don't need to do that. I just do it right on, on the top. So let's do it again. So we go to the next stitch. We take the back loop, keep our working yarn in the middle, jump over it, go to the back loop of the other side. And sometimes I just use the hook of my yarn, like going in that way. And then I roll 365 degrees the hook around in a circle. And like, that's how I grab it. And then I yarn over and pull through all three of those, those loops. Okay. So let's keep, let's keep doing that. Grab the yarn on that side, go over the yarn in the middle, grab the back loop on the other side and then pull through all three loops. Okay. And you can see how it's looking for my, my stitching. And what's nice about this is that it will also give you that same ridge that you have here because you're leaving that front bar. So it will mimic the same. Uh, so I'm going to go all the way across till I get to the end and I'll meet you back. Back loop on the top, jump over the working yarn in the middle, back loop on the bottom, pull through all three. Back loop on the top, jump over the working yarn, back loop on the bottom, pull through all three. Back loop on the top, working yarn in the middle, jump over it, back loop on the bottom, pull through all three. Do that until you get to the end. Now at the end, you have a couple stitches left. You can go in the back loop from the top and then on the bottom, you can go like toward the outside instead of going toward the middle because it's just hard to get in there. So we'll just do it like that. Okay, good. So now that we've finished our slip stitch or like our flat slip stitch, um, now we're going to cut our tail here and pull it through. And we can pull it to the inside of the hat. So we'll just go up in here somewhere. Pull that to the inside. All right. And that is our cat hat beanie. And what will happen when you wear this is that these little points up here are going to be little ears. Um, so, and I'll have some pictures showing that from my daughter um, modeling for me and whichever side you like the stripes on you can wear as the front of the hat you can tack it up here if you want the ears if you want the ears to kind of stay closed you can tack it um, and the only thing left to do now is to sew in your ends and uh, now we have another 
beanie. Now this one came in, came out just a tiny bit smaller than my last one. I think my intention was a little bit different. Not too much though. Just a hair different. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Uh, if you did, then be sure to follow along. I'm going to do a couple of other variations of this pattern with some different striping techniques to get a different look. Uh, I'm going to do a Wednesday Adams themed one uh, and maybe one other. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Thank you. Bye-bye.